What's going on guys? Welcome back, Leo Pazzo Productions. Thank you very much for tuning in. In today's video, we're gonna be having a closer look at this brand new video switcher here made by OC. It is the M2 dual HDMI video switcher, small, compact, and really well priced at only approximately $129 USD. So stick with me guys today in this video because I'm gonna be sharing with you guys what comes included with the kit, a bunch of the specs and features, how to connect it, how it operates, and at the end of this video, give you guys my overall final thoughts and review. So let's jump right into it, the OC M2. So guys, to go ahead and get you guys a little bit more familiar with this M2, this is basically a live streaming video switcher, which can support two HDMI inputs up to 4K 60 frames per second. And I will also mention those HDMI inputs, not only can we connect our cameras, but we can also connect our Xboxes, PS5s, our switches. So it's really a multi-functional device over here. We do also have an HDMI output, which will support 1080p 60 frames per second. And the fantastic option over here, the UVC output, which is going to allow us to connect this M2 to our PC, our Mac, and therefore we can go ahead and use VBix, OBS, or whatever software you want to use and live stream onto YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, whatever platform and software you want to use, this M2 is going to do the trick. So not only do we have HDMI inputs and outputs and UVC output, we do also have some audio input connections and output connections over here. So as you guys already saw with the the unboxing we do have this nice hard protective case which is going to allow us to store the video switcher along with any of the cables or accessories again we do have the HDMI cable this is a normal size HDMI to HDMI we do also have this USB 3.0 cable which measures approximately three to four feet or so so at the one end of this cable we do have a USB-C connection which is going to get connected to the back of the M2 video switcher via the USB-C UVC output and on the other end of the cable it's going to allow us to plug it into our PC or our Mac via USB 3.0 or USB-C 3.0 again because they do have a built-in adapter over here which is taking us from USB to USB-C so we do have both options as far as connecting it to our PC so guys one thing definitely worth mentioning and also taking note of it does say in the M2 user manual for us to connect the M2 to our PC or our Mac via the USB-C or the USB 3.0 protocol because that's going to allow us to take advantage of the maximum resolution and frames per second at 1080p 60 frames per second and finally the m2 video switcher itself you can see how small and compact it is we are greeted with 11 different touchpad buttons over here which are backlit leds as well so you can kind of see them in a dark environment we do also have some icons labeled over here on each button so it's actually really easy to use and self-explanatory if we go ahead and flip around the m2 you will also notice that we do have a couple of connections connections over here. So starting off onto the left hand side, we do have two HDMI input connections. And again, it does support 4K 60 frames per second, which is really nice as an HDMI input. Just next to that, we do have an HDMI output. This HDMI output is going to support up to 1080p at 60 frames per second. And finally over here at the back of the M2 to the far right hand side, we do have this USB-C connection. Again, as we spoke about earlier, this is the UVC output, which is going to allow us to connect the M2 to our PC or our Mac with the cable that's included with the kit. So that is as far as it goes with all of the connections that we have here at the back of the M2. Let's go ahead and have a closer look at the front because we do also have three connections over here as far as the audio. Starting on to the left hand side, we do have a 3.5 millimeter microphone input, which we can go ahead and just simply connect our microphones as an audio input. Next over here into the middle, we actually do have a 3.5 millimeter connection, which is a line input. So therefore we can 
add some kind of music or sound or any kind of audio from maybe like a mixer or from like another PC or any kind of maybe like your phone or tablet or anything like that. So anything that you want to send in as an extra audio input as a line input, we do also have that connection here onto the front and onto the far right hand side, we do have the headphone jack, the output jack for our headphones. So we can go ahead and simply monitor the audio as well. So as far as the overall build quality and the construction design of the M2, I will mention, yes, it does look like it's made out of plastic or some sort of ABS plastic, but overall it does feel like it's well built and designed. Again, I own several different other products from OC like their monitor and the Ghost Stream Deck and the Ghost Stream Deck Duet as well. So I can say that they definitely take pride in their products and they're always striving to improve. So I'm not really worried whatsoever about the build quality and the longevity of this product. So if we go ahead and have a closer look over here at the M2, you'll notice over here onto the left hand side and the right hand side, we do have some ventilation little ports for the thermal management. So it definitely can keep cool. As far as I understand, there is not a built in fan in this unit. And if there is, I did not hear it while I was using it. So it's really nice to see that again, it is going to be also quiet as well. If we go ahead and flip around the M2 over here towards the bottom, again, there's not really much to look at, but I will point out that either on the left-hand side and right-hand side, we do have these two little rubber pads, which are going to be very helpful when we place the M2 onto our desk, just to kind of prevent it from sliding around and therefore it can stay stationary. Just keep in mind right now, I'm actually recording this whole section of the video on my PC using the M2 for this example. Yes, I am using OBS, but the same concept and principles will apply if you are going to be using vMix or Twitch or Zoom or Teams or any other kind of software. Same kind of concept. You want to be able to add the M2 as a video input and an audio input. What the game plan is over here, I'm going to go and make myself a little bit smaller and we can have like a little picture and picture kind of set up. So this is a screen capture again in OBS. So the reason why I'm doing the screen capture because I wanna show you guys how I connected the M2 as a video input. So starting off over here towards the bottom underneath sources, yes, you can see that I have these three sources already. I got the GoStream M2 audio, I got the GoStream M2 video and the display captures. So these are my three inputs that I'm currently using, but let's show you guys how I actually did that. So for us to add the M2 to OBS, what we want to go ahead and do first underneath the sources tab, we want to go ahead and select this plus icon, which is going to allow us to add a source. So let's go ahead and press the plus icon. And right over here, we're going to see video capture device. And that's going to allow us to add the M2 as a video capture device. Pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and select it. We can rename it if we want to. So let's name it M2 video. Let's go ahead and press enter. And now this other tab opens up as far as the properties for that M2 video. So underneath devices, what we want to go ahead and select is this drop down menu and search for the GoStream M2. So let's go ahead and select that because that is the device that we want to connect. And there you go. We have selected that device and you would be able to normally see it right over here in this little display screen box. We do have a few other options and settings that we can mess around with if you wanted to. But but in this case, for this video, I'm just going to leave everything to default. Next, what you want to do is just go ahead and select OK and bang, you're going to see the video source displayed over here onto OBS just like that. Next, what we want to do over here is go to the plus icon because now we want to add the audio from the M2. So let's go ahead and press the plus icon, which is going to allow us to add next over here on audio input capture. So let's go ahead and select audio input capture. We can rename this to M2 audio. Let's press enter and bang. So right over here from the devices, we have a few options from this drop down menu. And what we want to search for is the HDMI GoStream M2. So this is what you want to select. Next, what you want to do is just go ahead and press OK. So now that you guys are a little bit more familiar on how I connected the M2 to my PC and OBS, what I'm going to do over here is just open up back this M2 video input. So now we have a nice full screen. So we are done with OBS. Basically, we have it connected to OBS and that's it. We can adjust our levels. We can do any kind of fine tuning as far as the settings. But right now, everything is going to be left up to the M2 video switcher. So let's go ahead and have a closer look at the M2. I'm just going to go ahead and press the switch button here on the M2. So again, starting off over here to the far right hand side at the back, we have the two HDMI inputs. Again, I am using the Osbot Tail Air PTZ camera. Right over here is the HDMI 
my output and this is again going to an external monitor which I have just over here to the left hand side so this external monitor is getting all of the video output from the M2 video switcher which is just giving me another perspective another view of all of my outputs and my final output to my viewers it can definitely come out really helpful again we talked about earlier the USB-C connection which is connected to my PC UVC output again looking over here at the front this is the wireless microphone that I'm using this is the Lark M2 so I just have the output from this receiver going to the input of the M2 this is the microphone input and that is what is collecting all of the audio for this video which is sending it to my PC next over here we do have a line input this line input is actually coming from my mixer so basically the reason why I've done that is because I want to actually add music to my live stream or to basically this video into the background next over here we have this connection this is the output for my headphones which I can go ahead and simply monitor the audio with these headphones that I have over here I just wanted to go ahead and get you guys a little bit more familiar with the M2 and all the buttons and how it operates honestly it's actually pretty self-explanatory all of these icons that we have here under the buttons are nice and straightforward so let's get a little bit more familiar starting off with one you can see that the one button over here input one is highlighted in red and that is because that is what is being displayed right now as my output to my live stream if i wanted to go ahead and display number two input you can see that it is green basically my preview i can go ahead and select that and it's going to make that switch so let's go ahead and do that right now and you can see nice easy quick simple switch so going back to one i just pressed one back to two back to two so let's go back to this shot over here and let's use this middle button over here so this middle button is basically kind of doing the same thing it's going to be making the switch between those two different inputs so you can go ahead and press this cut transition button and it's going to transition from the two different inputs so let's go ahead and press it there it is switching back to number two there it is switching back to camera view number one so now that you guys are a little bit more familiar with the basic buttons over here to the bottom let's go ahead and start off with these two buttons over here to the left hand side so we do have this one over here to the far left hand top corner let's go ahead and select it so now you'll notice that we have both of the inputs being displayed at the same time which is really nice but one thing that I'm not really too much of a fan of is that we have these black bars on either side but no problem because we can actually go ahead and fix that and adjust the size with these two other buttons over here at the side of the M2 so let's go ahead and press the button over here onto the far top right hand corner which is actually going to make it larger so here we go I pressed it once and you can see that now we have a full screen 16 by 9 both inputs being displayed at the same time but we can also go back to just displaying one input by just simply selecting which input you want to display so let's go ahead and display input number two by pressing the input number two so now we're going back to the one camera view and one other cool thing check this out we can actually use this middle button over here to flip it so input number one right now for an example is at the top we can go ahead and make that switch so input number one can be at the bottom and just like that with the one push of the button we can switch around the two different inputs layout so now that you guys are more familiar with the top left hand button over here let's go to this other one which is going to be two video inputs side by side and again same example by default you can see that we do have the black bars at the top and bottom this might work out fantastic for you or needs but in my case in most cases I'm going to go ahead and select the button over here onto the far right hand corner which is going to be the sizing button to make it bigger so let's go ahead and select it once and bang of course look now we got a full screen 16 by 9 and again just like we did previously we can actually go ahead and press the switch button over here the transition button and that's going to now switch the two inputs from the left side being to the right side and from the right side being over to the left side which is really nice so however you want to configure it I think this will be perfect because the direction on the way that I'm facing is kind of facing in towards the M2 and again if I don't want those black bars at the top and bottom I wanted to resize it no problem one click of a button bang here we go I think this is a fantastic setup you got a nice clear shot of me you got a nice clear so shot of the M2 this is perfect I really do like this one so we do have these four picture in picture presets over here which are really nice and we can adjust the size for each one what's really nice 
it actually remembers it saves the preset setting that you had that you previously used as far as the size of the picture in picture so now when I toggle between all of these it's remembering the size that I just used between all of these different picture in pictures and just like we did before we can use this transition button over here into the middle and bang look we just transitioned so now I'm the uh, bigger image over here and we have the m2 as the smaller image up onto the top left hand corner all right guys it looks like it's that time of the video to give you my overall thoughts and opinion of the m2 if you guys cannot tell already i'm definitely very impressed with all the specs and features that are available jam-packed into the small compact setup again only priced at 129 dollars all of the features as far as the hdmi input supporting 4k 60 frames per second not only can i connect my cameras but i can also connect ps5 xbox switch i can live stream to so many different social media platforms via my pc or also mac as well again the hdmi output is just an added feature 1080p 60 frames per second hdmi output the uvc output connection nice straightforward easy to use and get set up again i'm using obs and live streaming to youtube and facebook so it's definitely very easy to set up and connect and get going and again what about the audio connections the microphone input the line input the headphone output jack so you can monitor the audio and i will also mention there is very minimal latency delay as far as the hdmi output and the uvc output to your pc or mac so overall guys i'm definitely very impressed with this kit would i recommend it Yes, obviously 100% for what we are getting only at $129 is incredible. That's pretty much a wrap for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this video, you already know what to do. Like, share, comment, subscribe. If there's anything that I've missed, let me know down in the comment section down below. I appreciate you guys tuning in and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. <music>